I'm such an unlikely candidate to be an advocate for kids' lunch. You know, I was a white tablecloth celebrity chef for my whole career. And the worst thing you could say to me is, you know, Friday, Saturday night, somebody wanders into the kitchen and says, Chef, there's screaming children on table 19. What should I do? And my answer would be, ask them to leave. I wrote a book along the way called Bitter Harvest, and I really started to understand why food made us sick and why food could make our kids sick. Alice Waters asked me to come out to California. I became the director of nutrition services in Berkeley Unified School District. So when I came to Berkeley, all of the food came in these plastic bags, grilled cheese sandwiches, extremo burritos, pizza pockets. This food was never touched by human hands. And now we have salad bars in every school every day. We have no trans fats, no high fructose corn syrup, fresh fruits and vegetables. Every meal and all of our food is cooked from scratch. We feed children real food. The CDC has said that of the children born in the year 2000, that one out of every three Caucasians and one out of every two African Americans and Hispanics will have diabetes in their lifetime. And if that's not awful enough, most before they graduate high school. If we're looking at 40 or 45 percent of our children within 10 years are going to be diabetic, diabetes used to be an old people's disease. I mean, my grandparents had it. What are we going to do when these 18-year-old kids have had diabetes for four or five years? How long will they live? What's their life expectancy going to be? What's their quality of life going to be? You know, it's going to be like that movie Wall-E, where everybody's on the, in these wheelchairs too fat to move around. I mean, you know, we have to change this. There's nothing more important. Monday through Friday in this school. So every day, myself, my executive chef, and my sous chef get in at 5, and we start cooking for the day. So we cook 250 pounds of pasta, 250, 350 pounds of broccoli. We're mixing the cheese sauce, which we make from scratch and doesn't come out of a can, with the pasta, and that's getting packed out to schools. Broccoli's getting packed out to schools. Once a month, we have hamburgers. They're grass-finished, Hearst Ranch hamburgers. And then the next month, we'll have hot dogs, both from Hearst Ranch. Most schools might serve hamburgers or hot dogs all the time, but because we're buying this high-quality product, we can't afford it, so we serve it less often. It takes, you know, 10 or 12 hours to cut the broccoli, you know, for a day's worth of service here. So there's a tremendous amount of time and energy into doing what we do. Lunches are designed to be nutritious, and well -balanced. So one of the things that happens when you're changing children's food is sometimes they don't like it. <laughs> Shortly after I came, I got rid of two things. One of the things I got rid of was the nachos. And at this school, the kids revolted. And the nachos were regular trans fat laden chips with that orange day glow stuff that comes out of a can that doesn't have any cheese. And these kids, like for a long time, wouldn't eat because of that. And we had some problems with the pizza as well. And what I, what I did was we went and worked with the kids. With the pizza problem, I went to the school that really was having that problem, Malcolm X, and we talked about pizza. We talked about how they would like it. We talked about you know why they couldn't have exactly what they had before. And with the nacho project, we actually, myself and another chef, really researched and made what we think of as a kind of healthy nacho. And we came up with a good flaxseed chip, and there's no cheese sauce. It has beans or rice or chicken, and it has grated cheese. And, and we make it sort of like a dipping thing, so it's a little different. It's touching the kids over and over and over. And, you know, after a while, it starts to make a difference. It happens every noon. The history of the National School Lunch Program, which started about 60 years ago, was started because there weren't enough healthy recruits to go into the war. We were growing up a generation of children that were so malnourished that they weren't healthy enough to fight. When school lunch got put under the USDA, it was because they saw a way to support big agribusiness and push that food into school lunch. Attendance at this school is high, and one reason could very well be a noonday lunch in the National School Lunch Program. I think for the first 25 or 30 years, lunch ladies were cooking. And when those lunch ladies started to retire was around the same time all the equipment began to fail. And that's also was after World War II when we started to see peacetime utilization of wartime technology. So we started to see mass refrigeration and all of these processed foods, because processed foods basically came out of the war. Schools were trying to figure out how to get new equipment, how to hire new lunch ladies. Big business comes in and goes, hey, we have it here for your process. Nobody has to touch it. You don't need equipment. You don't need lunch ladies.
we spend a lot of time really working with our staff, cooking with our staff, teaching our staff, standing next to them all day long, um, helping them do, you know, do what we do and learn more skills. The price of a lunch is low. Money 101, the, our tax dollars, it all comes from tax dollars. USDA spends $8 billion of our tax money a year. It comes down to $2.57 or $2.59, depending on where you are, for a reimbursable meal. In most school districts, two-thirds goes to payroll and overhead. So you're left with $0.80 cents or maybe even a dollar for food. I mean, think about that dollar. I don't know about you, but, you know, I go to Starbucks or Pete's or whatever, and you get, you get a venti latte in San Francisco, it's $5. We now live in a country where we spend more money on our daily coffee than we're spending to feed our children for an entire week. It's unconscionable. The government also sets the guidelines that say this is a healthy meal. Chicken nuggets, tater tots, chocolate milk, and canned food cocktail with high fructose corn syrup is allowable. The government will pay me to feed that to children every day. So now you have school food people and principals and parents going, oh, we're serving healthy food. The government says so. Besides the $2.59 and the, from the feds and the $0.19 cents from the state, all schools get $0.19 cents per kid for free lunches. You don't actually get the $0.19 or $0.19.5, cents. you get it in what's called commodity food. So for instance, maybe the government buys a load of chicken from Tyson. Now what we do is just get what's called brown box. We get the whole cases of chicken, but very, very, very few schools do that. Most schools will opt to come together as co-ops and have those chickens made into chicken nuggets. So now the chicken has never left Tyson, and Tyson has been paid for the chicken. Then Tyson actually builds that chicken into chicken nuggets, sends it to the school district, and charges the school district a processing and delivery fee. So the USDA really doesn't make this a priority. What they're really making a priority is the crap that these big agribusiness companies are producing and feeding to us and our children. So we ought to blow up the USDA. Lunches are planned by a local school manager. Anyone in any part of the country can serve fresh fruits and vegetables. You just have to think seasonally. I mean, you do a lot of root vegetables, you do a lot of cooking greens, and you also put stuff by. So when I say fresh, I mean that it came in fresh. We actually built a freezer and bought 8,000 pounds, four tons of product over the course of the summer that we froze and processed to serve in the winter. It's not about being in California at all. And in, even in California, we have seasons. I mean, I only serve tomatoes till the end of October and there's no more tomatoes. What better use for our cultural riches than the school lunch? I think school lunch should be a health, health initiative. I think it should be taken away from the USDA and put under uh, the CDC, Center for Disease Control or Health and Human Services. We raise the guidelines so a healthy meal isn't chicken nuggets, you know, tater tots, canned fruit cocktail, and chocolate milk. The next thing I would do is say that all meals would be universal. Universal breakfast, universal lunch. That every child in America deserves a birthright. Birthright in our country should be that they get fed a healthy breakfast and a healthy lunch at school. And then I get rid of all competitive foods. Now in most school districts, they sell everything from slushies to donuts to cookies. We don't sell stuff here. We're not all organic. We're not all local. I still use commodity chicken, even though I think it supports, you know, really bad, you know, unsustainable food supplies. So I guess those are the kind of compromises. But we need to get rid of the processed foods. We need to ban trans fats, ban high fructose corn syrup, ban food colors and additives and, you know, hormones and antibiotics and animal husbandry. We need to be feeding kids healthy food. End of story.